Hi there. Um, this is uh, one of the Cinderella books that I picked. Um, it's called Glass Slipper Gold Sandal, and it's by Paul Fleshman and uh, Julie Pashkis. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit of it, and then I'll go through and answer some of the questions that were posed to us. Um, and the subtitle is A Worldwide Cinderella, if that kind of hints at anything. Um, once upon a time, there lived a wealthy merchant whose wife had died. They had one daughter, gentle-eyed and good-hearted. And this says Mexico right here. Down the road lived a widow with two daughters. The woman gave the girl treats when she passed, pan dulce to eat, sugar cane to chew. The girl knew that her father was lonely. You should marry the widow, she told him. She's nice to me. The father had his doubts, but the girl kept asking. And how long can a father say no to his daughter? And so he and the widow were married. And this says Korea right here. But no sooner had the stepmother moved in than she began to order the girl about. All day long, she set her to weeding the rice fields and cooking and carrying. The woman gave the girl's room to her own lazy daughters. At night, the girl had nowhere else to sleep but curled for warmth among the ashes on the hearth. And this right here says Iraq. Her stepmother allowed her only a few scraps of food. Her stomach howled. Then the girl recalled how she begged her father to marry. I picked up the scorpion with my own hand, she told herself. She vowed not to complain to her father and upset him. But when the girl was out tending the cattle, the beasts heard her crying for hunger. Don't weep, said one of the cows, and the animal poured honey for her from its horn. And it says, Russia, right there. And a fairy gave her figs and apricots. That says, Iran. And Godfather Snake gave her rice. And that says, India. Once she was eating well and proper, the girl bloomed into a rare, right rare beauty. The stepmother couldn't fathom it. And meanwhile, her own sour-faced daughters would curdle the milk if they looked at it twice. And that says Ireland. One day it was announced far and wide that the great king was in search of a queen. All the unmarried women dressed in their finest robes and set off for the palace. To make sure the girl couldn't go, the stepmother threw an apron full of lentils into the ashes and ordered her to pick them all out. You might be able to guess from lentils that that's Germany. And scour all the kitchen pots too, she hollered. Um, so basically the rest of the story goes on um, somewhat like the traditional Cinderella story, but obviously the different pages represent different countries, so the wording is different. Um, as far as the questions go, um, the setting, the time, or the locations of the book, they're all different throughout the book. Um, the wording of each page is changed to reflect the country listed on that page. Uh, for instance, on one of the pages, um, it talked about Cinderella weeding the rice fields, and that country listed was Korea. In another page, it talked about honey being poured from a cow's horn to feed Cinderella. And I thought that was interesting. And after doing a little research, I found that the honey is mentioned in many Russian folk tales. Uh, also, on the page where Cinderella gets her beautiful gown, she's actually wearing a kimono. And that country listed is, you probably guessed, Japan. Um, Cinderella in this story, as far as her character development, she's somewhat of the same typical Cinderella that we have all probably heard about since we were kids. Um, she's first mentioned as just gentle and good-hearted little girl. Uh, the story uh, told about how the daughter was sad for her widowed father. Um, so that tells us that she is empathetic um, and, and caring. She begged her father to marry this, this woman. Um, so, and then felt guilty um, for complaining to her father about how she was being treated by this woman. So she's obviously very strong um, and loving. She's also determined as she doesn't stop doing what she needs to do just to keep the peace and to keep her father happy. Um, and in the end, she makes her way to the king's celebration in search of um, something better. So she's very determined and strong. 
As far as the gown goes, um, the page that talks about the gown, as I stated before, states it is a kimono red. Um, red is the sunset and a sarong made of gold. Um, and the sarong reference is on the page uh, of the country Indonesia and the kimono Japan. And the shoe is, I thought this part was really, really cool. Um, the shoe, when it talks about the shoe, it gives three different shoes dependent upon the country. You can see this one. Um, it says the glass slipper was from France. Um, and then it talks about diamond anklets in India. And then um, sandals of gold, Iraq. So it actually gives three different shoes. And I think that's just to kind of represent quite a few different countries. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then as far as um, the prince, what represents the prince, it talks about um, her dancing all night with the headman's son. Um, and... It shows that I guess the prince is a very determined young man because kind of like the traditional Cinderella story, he goes from house to house looking for his princess. So he's very determined to find her. Um, and he will not take no for an answer to get what he wants. Um, as the fairy godmother, there's actually two different... Um, two different characters in here. It talks about, at first, uh, a witch um, is the person that gets her out of her chores, and then her auntie, and, and the witch um, gets her into her kimono, and then the girl's auntie gets her to the, the ball or the party. So I think that there are two different um, godmother type characters. Um, let me see as far as what country that it talks about with the, okay. So the witch woman, um, the country listed is um, Appalachia. And she spoke a spell. And then when it talks about um, the girl's auntie, it's West Indies. And she said, walk to the ball, said the girl's auntie. Never. She picked a big round bread fruit, fruit from a tree and tapped it three times with her wand. Um, so I guess she'd be considered a godmother. Um, and that's the magic right there. Quick as the blink of a firefly, that bread fruit changed itself into a coach. So, and as far as the illustrations go... Um, I believe that the illustrations in this book are everything. Um, if you see all of the really cool artwork, I'll kind of show it up close. All the really cool artwork, I think it just hits at home. Um, when it talks about China, it has um, like the dragons um, and the kimono. When it talks about... Um, Iran, it has the camel and all of these just really red, rich colors. When it talks about Ireland, if I can find it on here, um, here we go. Ireland, it's just these really beautiful green color is the, the background page. And when I think of Ireland, I think of the rolling green hills. I mean, we hear that um, talked about all the time. So I just think of those, um, rolling green hills. So I thought that that green was perfect. Um, and w as far as the text and the illustrations go, um, I could sometimes read some of the text and not even read the country that was labeled on each by each picture picture. And I would just know automatically by the text that the author put with that country. Um, you know, when it talks about the kimono for Japan, it talks about lentils in Germany um, to make sure the girl can go. The stepmother threw an apron full of lentils into the ashes and ordered her to pick them out. So lentils for Germany. Um, so it just really, um, as far as, as far as the text and the illustrations, it just all, all really 
helped each other big time. And then of course the, the slippers and the sandals um, to the different countries. Um, as far as, I guess that the texture and the patterns and things, every single page has um, these type of rich textures and patterns on them, representing the country in the background. So, all these beautiful colors. I think that they really help to tell the story. So, um, this is a great book. I think I'm going to read it to my son just because he loves reading and researching about different countries and different historical um, events. And so, I just think that this would be a really great book to read to kids and maybe get into further discussion about those countries. So, um, I would definitely recommend this one.